Awesome. Welcome everyone to our Tuesday, April 16th Outreach and Network Guild meeting. Glad to see you all here. Um, I would like to start us out with a short grounding practice to connect to our bodies and to the land. So if you're comfortable, I invite you to close your eyes, start to feel your breath moving in and out of your body all on its own. Notice the exchange of air between your body and the environment around you. And as you stay aware of your breath, I invite you to also notice your feet on the ground and your body on the seat beneath you. Notice what it feels like to breathe and feel these points of contact. And I invite you to picture in your mind's eye the building that you are in the building that's holding you in this room. And notice how the building is connected to the earth deep down under the surface. And I invite you to zoom out a little bit more and notice the landscape where you are, where you live in your mind's eye. And if it's available to you, try and think of a couple of landmarks in the landscape that you are familiar with, places that might offer you comfort or a sense of connection or relationship. And just imagine in the landscape, all of the different animals, plants, microorganisms, people that share this biosphere with you. And notice how you are in relationship with all of them all the time. Part of this very large web of existence that we can conceptualize on a micro level, maybe your street or your neighborhood or your island, and then the macro level that expands to the entire planet and beyond. And I invite you to feel some gratitude in this moment and to offer it to all of the beings, all of the peoples who have stewarded the land where you live. In time, for time immemorial, both in ancient times all the way up until now. We can recognize our obligation, our sacred obligation to be good relatives as much as we can amongst these peoples and all of the beings in the, our landscapes where we are. And we can make a practice of noticing and balance in our relationships to the land and to the peoples on the land and work to move towards right relationship. Now I invite you to Feel your fingers and your toes slowly come back to your body. And we can count backwards from three to come back to the circle. Three, two, one. Open your eyes.
And I just realizing, I think I had a check-in question before and it's now left my brain. Um, I want to, I want to do one that's kind of keeping it light. So, um, what is a flower that you have noticed lately, a flower or a plant that you have felt some sort of relationship to any kind of relationship? And the circle, as I see it, is Rolan, Linda, Ben, and me. And I'll put that in the chat. And Rolan, over to you. Um, the video cut out a lot while you were asking the question, but I think I get the gist of it. And it is Dandelion. Um, and I'll see who is the... Linda, over to you. I don't know the name of this plant. <clears throat> it grows on the coast here in Dana Point very abundantly in the spring. It's a big purple um, budding flower. It's like a spear and oh, it's just amazing. It comes in uh, several varieties and I've been taking photos of it. I'll try to share one eventually, but oh, that's what I've been noticing. Um, to you, Ben. You know, what came to mind, there's a, a, a viburnum, I think, and uh, that's sort of near the pond. And it's the first, we've had a couple little um, uh, salmonberry flowers, little pink flowers here and there, but the viburnum is just this gorgeous, like ready orange uh, blossom. So it's the first like really showy spray of color. Um, so that's what comes to me. Um, over to you, Ronnie. I would say uh, pink primrose. It's grow. It grows wild everywhere here, and they're just yeah, massively abundant, and they grow really low to the ground. And some of them are like this big, and they have they're full of yellow pollen in the middle, and they're just beautiful. Awesome. So I will share my screen so that we can all see our agenda for today. Went through and added some things that we talked about at our coordination meeting last night. No, I don't want to restart my app. Okay. So I thought we could go through the agenda and prioritize what seems most important to talk about first, because um, all of this could very easily take well over an hour or an hour and a half. Um, one leftover thing that we had from our last meeting was an update on the co-op guy. And I think that was a question from Pam and I don't remember the context or who the co-op guy is. Oh, so... I think I know that. And okay. there's no update. I think it's, um, uh, yeah, the BC, BC Federation of Cooperatives, I think oh. something like that. And uh, he never got back to us. So oh, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's actually probably, um, I will I will make a note to follow up. So that's easy. Great, <laughs> check that off and I added an action item. Um, another item from last night, um, Roland brought up from artwork and philosophy, the ongoing six conversations exploration. And we're talking about um, that sort of circle modality in conjunction with the lifeboat circles and how that could work moving forward. We also have navigation sessions to talk about both the ongoing uh, rhythm and scheduling and also invites. So how are we, how are we actually getting people to come to the navigation sessions? We'd also asked, um, Linda was going to look at our website and offer some feedback. And I would also love to do a group review of the website. Um, and that could very much, that could happen piecemeal. That doesn't have to be all at once. Um, and I also added um, talking about what to put in the newsletter this week. So if there's any decisions made about navigation sessions. Oh wait, I think I did a newsletter. No, it is, it is this week. I think it's already been two weeks. Okay, um, sorry, mental processing. Um, yeah, so if we make some decisions about scheduling, it'd be good for me to know what to put in the newsletter, what to let people know about. Are there any other items 
that anyone has to add to the agenda. Over to you, Rowan. Um, there is um, a sort of hashing out and clarifying what the outreach guild guild's um, role is in, um, uh, for example, uh, there's the idea that we're still working on in the, um, why can I never remember the name of this guild, Heartwork Guild um, uh, for the book club and how do we let people know about it? And what is, uh, does the uh, outreach guild have a role in that? So that's just using that as an example, uh, uh, because, you know, if there's workshops that are being offered by the farm guild, um, is, is, the out, how, is that outreach to advertise it? And so what's the role of outreach there? Or can we, if there is a role, can we figure out how to streamline it so that it does beca doesn't become uh, too much. Uh, and um, is there anything else? Um, uh, there's uh, So in terms of the website, there's the website and there's also um, just social media in general and how to manage social media. Um, so th I think that's a, another thing. I'd like to suggest that there's, that we could also look at the agenda because there's a lot of stuff. We could also look at the agenda, not just not just in terms of priority, but what do we need to talk about in circle and what could be tasked out uh, individually and what could be discussed online. Um, so that might lighten a little bit what we're going to be meeting and talking about today as a suggestion. So uh, over to Linda. I don't have anything to add. There's <clears throat> any one of these could take you know, our full time. Uh, so it just, whatever we want to prioritize. Um, yeah, so I have nothing really to add uh, to you, uh, Ben. Yeah, and that makes me think, I don't have anything to add. I like Roland's idea about figuring out how also not only prioritizing, but offloading, you know, like if, um, and, and it also makes me think about time boxing because any topic could take more time than it needs to. So is, can we like kind of figure out how much we want to, how much effort, effort or emphasis we want to put on different things. Um, and I would say, I think that the um, public publicizing social media stuff is, and the website review are important, but not as timely in my mind as the six conversations and the navigation session. So I would kind of bump them higher on the list um, over to you, Ronnie. Yeah, I agree with all of that. Um, and I, yeah, I think the lifeboat circles and the navigation sessions feel timely. And then once we decide what we want to do in the next, like later on, we can have meetings about how all the social media stuff happens, sort of basically doing AMAC reflect specifically around those, um, how we've been doing things. Um, I see the, I think actually reviewing the website is something we could each do on our own and just make notes about different parts. Um, anything we think could be updated or changed or moved to a different place or anything that is missing. Um, that way we're not all sitting here taking time to read it and then discuss. Um, so I would propose that we each take some time over the next couple of weeks to look at the website and just jot some notes. Um, ben. Um, just a, like a process thing. What we could do is actually add subtasks under that for each person that you want to review and then, you know, and assign it to each person. And then we could, we could even put the notes in those subtasks and click them off when, when we're done, either add notes or just click it off as I've done a review and it looked good for me. Put our names to start. Figure out how do I go back. Okay. Awesome. All right. So it sounds like 
Um, are we in agreement to start with the six conversations and lifeboat circles? All right. So um, is there anybody who'd like to start, start us off? I guess there's a, uh, and I'm assuming we're going to do sort of gathering consideration style. Yeah. Um, so I, I just the the summary from the heart work meeting was recognizing that there's a lot of overlap in terms of the structure, what we were hoping to do in the lifeboat circles, which we have traditionally done as a single circle conversation, what does building a lifeboat look like to you? And the the questions that are in the six conversations um, basically are good elaborations of that. So um, in a way, I think it's still the same spirit of giving more people an opportunity uh, to contribute to a shared understanding of what building a lifeboat looks like and just getting a little deeper into it um you know the with the questions um and i guess so adding well i'm actually i'm going to try to keep with the the one one thing per cycle and pass then so i pass to ronnie Oh, I'm unmuted. Okay. Um, yeah, so based on what Roland and Ben shared last night, um, it, it seems like a good opportunity to, I don't know, maybe revamp the lifeboat circle a little bit, put some new life into it, some new, some more curiosity, some new questions. And um, <laughs> Yeah, and I think integrating the six conversations, I'm really, I've been hearing about this framework and I'm really curious about it. And I think if we were to sh talk about the lifeboat circles with six conversations, I think other people would probably be interested in learning about it too. Even hearing the title of it sounds interesting to me. So, um, yeah, and I'm curious, oh, sorry, I'm saying a lot of things. I'll I'll stop there. <laughs> Um, I keep losing my chat. I think Roland is next. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Um, so uh, that all sounds good. And I'd like to circle back to, well, not in this conversation, but I think one of the ways that we had been talking about this, using the six conversations was to uh, deepen the understanding and the, the relationships within the Lifeboat Academy membership currently. So for, for uh, new guild members uh, in particular. So um, I would, I, I will likely, if I, I, I would likely come back to this um, if it feels like it, it's becoming overly diluted. Well, I don't know. I don't want to say that actually. Um, that's what I'm, that's what I'm championing is the, the guild membership participating in the six conversations. So if I come back to that, that's why. <laughs> um, yeah. So I I will hold to the one one item per per turn. So I will pass to Linda. So I have not been to either the the lifeboat conversation nor to the six conversations. I mean, from my point of view, let's just do. But it seems like we need something that we want to put out that helps people understand what's happening at the Lifeboat Academy and helps them think through what might happen because they pay attention to the Lifeboat Academy and what we're putting out there. So it seems to me we just need a process for maybe blending the two. And I, I don't know quite what that looks like since I don't need, know either but that's what it seems to me that maybe there's a little small task force that needs to be formed and we just take that on in between the sessions and do it and then put it out there. That would be my little, you know, I'm very <laughs> practical, you know, let's just get it done, do it. Seems like that's where we are. 
I'll pass to you, Ben. Yeah, I, I agree. And, and I think that the tweaking is actually the only thing that really makes a difference between because there's actually one of the conversations is uh, I think it's called the invitation and the invitation is really it's there's one one of the two or one of the six conversations is basically the lifeboat conversation as we envision it and um, the way that we've done just Linda to fill you in um, we've done them in a, using a circle process and the um, I think really we just start with building a lifeboat means different things to different people. What does building a lifeboat look like to you? And it kind of like this in a gathering consideration style where we just go around until everyone um, contributes, you know, uh, sort of a, a an idea. And then the question is, I believe something like, um, you know, what are you noticing in what we're sharing? Kind of a weaving part to it. And um, my understanding of the big difference then with the six conversations is that then they keep going about, you know, what are your reservations? What's, you know, what keeps you from being involved? And um, there, there's some other provocative, I can't remember the, what the six conversations are, but they're all still around the same topic, but just a different, a different question that would lend itself to that same style. So in some ways it's almost like we just have to, in terms of cust or uh, revamping the lifeboat, it's just going through and picking which of the questions from the six conversations we wanna do. And then I, the big question always is schedule and invitations. You know, um, when do they happen? And who who do we invite and how many people do we want to, you know, have at the conversations? And um, but I, I think um, I agree. I think this doesn't have to be complicated. And, um, you know, how do we keep it simple? And um, yeah, and move on from there. So, Ronnie, over to you. Well, I say we treat it as an experiment and um, we can all, you know, the people who have more experience with the six numbers, we could do considerations about which questions to include and then we can work together to schedule it. And um, I'm feeling like um, advertising it sort of as a, a new experience we're offering. It's, it's the same, but it's also different. So... Um, I really appreciate how it goes into some deeper questions because the, the lifeboat circle as we've done it is, it gets very, it's a lot of ideas. It's very, there's a, yeah, it's a lot of ideas and concepts and, you know, brainstorming and dreaming really big. And also at the end of the day, people come up with all kinds of reasons, myself included, not to do things <laughs> or not to, not to build community or do, yeah, whatever. So it sounds really useful. So maybe, I don't know, advertising it in some way of like, this is a, a different thing than we've offered before. And we're really excited to offer it and we'd love for you to be there. Um, yeah, over to Lola. Uh, so uh, it sounds like we want to offer the six conversations format um, sooner rather than later. And I think now it's just figuring out what would be the best way to do that. You know, there's, uh, I think the questions that um, Ben was asking, you know, sort of the 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 practical bits. Um, yeah. So I, I would vote to let's just plan it. So over to Linda. <clears throat> Yeah, I'm in agreement and I'm going to now move into my <laughs> zoom on my phone mode so I can follow the conversation. I'm all for just scheduling however we want to structure doing it and just going forward. It sounds like it's the right thing to do. So, up, uh, you know, revamp the uh it sounds like your the lifeboat conversation was a, you know, kind of a um what do you call it a um fairly solid 
onboarding way of introducing what you're doing. And now we want to integrate it with the six conversations to hopefully, you know, update it and, and help help people make decisions about whether they want to join. That's what I'm noticing that people aren't joining. So maybe the six conversations will help people kind of allow that to enter in and help them decide. So I'm going to leave you for a minute and then I'll come back in to you, uh, Ben. Oh, yeah, I just did a really quick search and I found the first thing that I could that listed the what the different topics were the six for the six conversations. And I think it's actually the possibility is the one that is like the lifeboat circle. And, um, and this is, uh, they I know I've read that there's we don't have to do them in a particular order. Um, and uh, um sometimes the invitation is first and sometimes the invitation is last and um uh anyhow that really is just a uh, um and yeah that's why i put it in the chat and and I, I again i kind of feel like i'm just uh dittoing what linda was saying but i i think that um It does belong in outreach and heart work because I think it is one of the, if I want to say this, we might also want to think about how it fits with onboarding because I think one of the challenges that we have, one of the things I keep hearing is people saying, what is this and expecting an answer? And the answer is, it's whatever you want it to be in a way, you know, like it's um, that what it is depends on who shows up. Yes. And somehow I think that message doesn't, yes. doesn't come out um, as easily. And I think this, I think these conversations could really underscore that, like, this is what you make it. And it that it is not a passive, you know, this is not the Ben and Roland show. And um uh, and, you know, and if you have a question, you need to answer the question that other people, you know, other people need to answer the question for themselves. So, um, yeah, yeah. So I'm not sure, I guess, our, you know, it sounds maybe like we're ready to segue into maybe some of the more practical stuff and figure out how that happens. Uh, so I pass over to Ronnie. Yes. So the first thing that comes to mind to me is scheduling because it's the thing that is probably the hardest of all of the practical steps. Um, personally, I can't think about doing anything else until May, um, at least the first week of May. And also that gives us at least two weeks to advertise. Um, and also flush, flush it out and, and stuff like that. Um, so I would propose May, first week of May or later. Um, and I would also propose a time in the evening because it seems like more people are available in the evenings. Um, And I propose we start by inviting everybody in the guilds and uh, and put it, yeah, I'll start with that and see what other people have. Over to Roland. Yeah, evenings, um, even though I'm jealous of my time in the evenings, it makes sense. Uh, it would make scheduling easier <laughs> uh, as opposed to trying to find time during the day. Um, uh, yeah, well, and there's also the question and this, this I'm going to leave to the facilitators to work out. It's also, uh, I think the question of how many, how many people per session makes a lot of sense that also implies the amount of time that, uh, how long do we want these meetings to be should probably be made clear. Um, uh, in terms of when to start, I, I uh, 
probably may make sense because we're already mid-April. Um, and at the same time, there are, you know, Ben is part of outreach as well as hard work. Um, but April is not part of our outreach and is part of, of hard work and has indicated that she would be interested in facilitating. So uh, I guess it depends on how many people become interested over the long term and uh, how many people per session, therefore more than one more than one facilitator to be able to offer it for more than one day. I, I know I'm, I might be going a bit too far into the future, uh, but it's something that we can keep in mind also. Uh, yeah, so uh, over to Linda. Linda is in transit to an appointment. So yeah, I I, yeah, I'll just say, I, I, I just think um, moving ahead, I think it's a great thing. I, the one question I would have is how many people do we think uh, are going to be up for this? Mm -hmm. Do we have any idea? And on to you, uh, Ben. Mm -hmm. Can't tell if I'm muted. I was uh, typing notes. So, okay. Um, right. I think that um, evenings are good. And let's remember East Coast evenings as well. Um, we have some, well, we we definitely have people in Central Time. Becca's in Central. And, um, and that's actually probably good for me too, because I would prefer an earlier evening rather than a later evening. Um, so um i like the evening i um i think i think linda has a really the right question how many people do we expect would be interested in this i guess there's also a question are we expecting that if you're coming to one you're coming to all or can people drop in um you know if you can only make this conversation or um you know, or are we expecting people to make a commitment? And um, how many people and how long the meetings? Well, I'll say in terms of how long the meetings, I think it's a choice of 60 minutes or 90 minutes. I think, you know, uh, much more than 90 minutes, you could get away with two hours, but um, much more than 90 minutes, people really start to fade much less than 60 minutes, you can't really get much going. Um, so, um, uh, I, part of me wonders if we try to get, and also for the size of the meeting, I think our big concern will be getting enough people to be willing to commit, not having too many people. And I also think that, um, as a strategy, if we can get, well, and actually I think this is. I'm 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 prattling a little bit because I'm working through an idea that I don't have fully formed. I think it has it's something to do with the strategy about how we schedule it and also how we do outreach. If we have a committed group of say five of us, um, then that's going to ensure that the conversations are are vital you know are are lively and will make it much more interesting for other people who might want to drop in so uh especially since we have uh you know a, a, a short list of people who are involved in the guilds i guess it would be maybe figuring out how what night of the week and i think the other question is weekly or bi-weekly uh, i think once a month is probably well i don't know it could be monthly it could be every two weeks it could be weekly um and i wonder if there's a way of reaching out to all of the usually the likely suspects and figuring out what works for for us and then inviting um you know kind of expanding the list beyond that um so i think i've paddled along on that i think that's basically it feels like we should get the core group figure out what works best for the core group 
and then invite other people into it. And um, so it's kind of building on Roland's thing of focusing on guild members first and then expanding it beyond that. Over to you, Ronnie. Yeah, good stuff. Um, I think rotating facilitators would be awesome. I think if April's able to facilitate at least the first one, then I can sort of shadow because this the six conversations are newer to me. I can shadow her and then maybe do the next one, or you know, we can figure it out as we go, kind of like with navigation sessions. Oh. Um, I think monthly is definitely too far apart. I think a month can pass and people can easily forget what their experience was like and things that came up for them. Um, weekly might be too often for some people. I'm also thinking of myself because I have a lot of different like bi-weekly commitments right now. Um, so bi-weekly tends to work well for me and I think for other people too, but it, we could we could do a poll. I'm just saying we could we could also just pick one and try it out. Um, I kind of like the maybe a soft commitment. So it's like we're offering this lifeboat conversation series. We haven't done this before. Uh, we'd love to have you there. Here's a bit about it. And um, you have the option of coming to all of them. So you'll get, you know, this full experience and you'll also get a lot out of it if you drop in. So I like there, I like for there to be an option, I think, especially because this is kind of a pilot version. Um, and um, yeah, I think this is really cool. I think it's a really great way to engage people about lifeboat building, not just in the practical webinar, you know, here's how to do it, but what are all of the things that come up for you? Kind of digging down into maybe some like subconscious beliefs and things like that. I think that could be really interesting and useful. Um, yeah, over to Roland. So the frequency, um, I am thinking about the, uh, we currently have potentially three people who are willing to, I don't know if I should be using the word facilitator, uh, uh, you know, do, do we want it to be facilitated or is it the circle keeper, you know, the language is a, is a useful lie kind of thing, you know, just to, to frame the, the role. Um, anyway, we've got three people who are willing to, to, to be circle keepers. Uh, and so, uh, in terms of, uh, um, uh, I, I just got distracted. So facilitators, oh yeah. So in terms of frequency, if we've got uh, a pool of people who are circle keepers, then that could potentially increase the, the amount of times in a month that in could be offered because all three facilitators don't need to be there at the same time. Um, and uh, it could also open things up uh, in terms of different groups depending on number of people interested or just in terms of availability. Um, so I could see that as a, as a, as a possibility also. So probably I'm think I I'm, I'm wanting to start with what are the resources that we're starting that we begin with uh, to be able to offer it. And then, and then seeing what's possible from, from there. So over to Linda. So what occurs to me is whether or not this might be something that we offer all the time. So it doesn't really matter if people miss a session, they can always catch it another time around. I mean, if this is going to be the primary way the Lifeboat Academy um, puts itself out to the broader public and is asking questions to you know, on possibly onboard more members, active members, or also helps local groups, you know, take these questions into their own groups, you know, you'd want to keep it going. And so I wouldn't want to space it out to, you know, once a month, I'd want it at least to be 
every other week or maybe even once a week and just keep it going. You know what I'm saying? So it's the conversation continues and there are, and then there are ways we think through for those people who want to continue and become more involved with the academy. Um, what do we offer those people who do want to become more active as a way to help them become integrated? Um, so those are some of the thoughts that I'm having as we unfold the conversation. Uh, back to you, Ben. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really good stuff. And I think, uh, Rolan, I'm wondering if you're you're imagining that we're planning for a larger scale maybe than I am. But then I, I looked at our guild list and we've got 16 people on the, the guilds, in the guilds, but we probably have three people of the 16, three, maybe four that um, I don't think will be interested or haven't been showing up. And, and um, uh, but then everyone else I think would be interested in this. And that still leaves like 12 folk. Um, and and I do think it could potentially be an interesting way of um, bringing people in, like like Linda is suggesting. I still like Ronnie's idea, and I think to keep this manageable, I think we should treat it as a single cycle, but with the idea that if it works, we can, you know, figure out how to um, run it again easily. You know, like if we find the right cadence. And I guess it does bring up the question because, so, you know, the if you think about these conversations, they kind of flesh out, what are you hesitating? What are you bringing? How are you committing? What do you want to do? But then the, where does that go? You know, there's a sort of like, how does that land? Um, and do those of us, like do, if we're thinking about the model, that we might promote for people to build their own lifeboats. Do, do we want to propose to, I guess that's the thing. If we were talking to a lifeboat builder who was wanting to do these conversations, would we say, keep them going? Or would we say, bring everyone up to speed and then move into some other mode? And, um, and that makes me think about the navigation sessions, which are more, uh, um, really meant to be the ongoing way that people are, are connecting. Anyhow, I think these are really interesting questions and I'm, I'm just reminding myself, it's like, let's, how simple can we do it? What's the minimum viable product that, you know, will help us actually test it out. And it feels to me like, I think we're settling on because we're all saying monthly is probably too infrequent. Weekly might be a bit of a challenge. I think we're set on bi-weekly. Um, so, and I think if we're talking about evenings that are suitable for East Coast and, and Pacific, then we're kind of establishing a, a pretty tight timeline. So we almost, as if we can figure out which day of the week, you know, and which is probably Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday, could be Monday. Um, I think we've got the schedule almost, you know, that's, we can narrow it down from that. And um, and I like Ronnie's idea of getting at least soft commitments, and then we'll have a sense of how, ma how many people we're talking about. And, you know, if we get 12 people who are committed, then we're going to get eight, six to eight people that'll show up, right, um, uh, from, from week to week. And then, um, yeah, I feel like, uh, I kind of feel like may maybe we might have enough to move, like to figure out what the next steps look like. Uh, you know, it feels like we're getting down to brass tacks. So over to Ronnie. I just had a couple of thoughts. So are we saying, is it going to be six, a series of six conversations, six lifeboat circles? If so, to do it once a week, that would happen within six weeks. If we do it every other week, that would happen within 12 weeks. So six weeks versus 12 weeks is quite a big difference. Um, and is this really designed to, you know, if it were to happen in six weeks, tighter timeline, then people could, you know, get what they get out of it and hopefully feel more 
ready to to go deeper into their lifeboat building or if it's over 12 weeks it's more of a kind of slow build emergent thing so i just wanted to name the differences between those two um because i think that yeah i think that it's important um and then i really like framing it as a series because we did ongoing lifeboat circles before and it kind of it just kind of fizzled out from what I can remember. We didn't have much uptake at all. I mean, some of the circles we had a, a good number of people, but over time it just kind of fizzled out. And I kind of feel like offering the series is, I don't know, it makes it a little more special or like interesting. Um, so people can join for the series, make the soft commitment. And after we can say, do you want lifeboat mentoring? Do you want to come to navigation sessions? Um, how can we support you in reaching out to your community? And then if somebody new comes in, we can say, oh, great. We're starting a new series of six conversations for lifeboat builders at, at the beginning of June. And then they sign up. So it's kind of a way to get, yeah, get more commitment. Um, and we can do the series in an ongoing way and then also be leading people to the other tools that we offer, um, which navigation sessions, again, are designed for other people to also learn how to facilitate for their own community. So ideally, we're empowering people to take the tools elsewhere. Um, so yeah, those were thoughts that I had. And other than that, I'm, yeah, I'm interested in what, figuring out when when exactly we want it to happen how we move forward. Over to Roman. Yes, and um uh, I think the series is interesting because it is a way to get people to start to commit to coming to something regularly. Um and then after after having uh, done the six conversation series that uh, that they can then graduate uh, to the navigation session. So uh, what it's doing is that it is habit forming and also redirecting neural pathways to start thinking collectively or uh, uh, collaboratively. Um, so uh, I'm I'm all for the series of six. And um, how do we want to go about picking? Um, dates or start a start date and a, a repeating meeting date over to Linda. We may have lost Linda. So um, I will defer if Linda pops back in and. Um, yeah, yeah I, I'm here. I'll just okay. add one other thing and then I'm, I'm probably going to have to leave. It It seems to me well, not seems to me. I still have questions, so nothing seems to me. But I, I am, I am wondering if the next, I mean, if people come to the series, if the goal is to get the next step would be to attract them to the navigation session. Wouldn't the goal be to, you know, help them find their way into integrating them themselves into some of the guilds and some of the other things that are happening. I mean, I'm just wondering what, what would be the ideal outcome of attracting outsiders to this six conversation series? I guess that's my question. Mm -hmm. What are we really trying to do? What are we, what, what's, what's our, what's the, you know, motivation for us to be offering this? Yeah. Are you done? I'm done. Yeah, I'm, thank I'm okay. sorry. Ben, to you, sorry. Okay. Um, yeah, that's a really, that's a $64,000 question. And I think that my answer would be, at, there's two things. Because one is we want to bring people into the guilds and we also want to be supporting, or at least the, you know, the primary motivation from the start has been the network of networks and so we're trying to find people that are willing to plant seeds in their local community and at the same time people that would be willing to help out with the so i guess that's some people are going to be interested in 
starting their own local support group or you know resilience network and some people are going to be interested in stitching together the network of networks and so both of those i think are a, a desired outcome but i think that the really and that i'm just speaking for myself but i have this strong feeling of i don't want this to be another just discussion group you know um that it is ultimately about getting people involved in building either their own resilience network or helping us build a broader resilience network and um uh and it's not just a isn't that interesting but you know anyhow and some people are going to show up for that and that's what they're going to show up for and that's how it is so over to you Ronnie. yeah i think it's the both because also participating in guilds teaches skills for facilitating meeting facilitating right. circles aim mm -hmm. act reflect all of those things so it's really my hope is that people would feel like they get a lot out of it i get a lot out of it this is really crucial like practice for me and all of the other things that I'm doing. And I really see this series as, in a way it's training. It's like circle process training. Um, it's it's training in, in how to build a practice of coming together to talk about things in different ways, a liber in a liberating structure. And, you know, someone could go through the series and then say, I want to host this for my community, just like a navigation session. So I'm really seeing sort of the fractal iterative nature of or potential of this. Um, and we could frame it that way too. Come participate in a, in this, you know, six or 12 week series um, for exploring the all kinds of things related to building a personal resilience network and see if it's something that you want to bring to your community. Um, and that's, I think that that, I think it's honestly feeling like a really great first taste of what the Lifeboat Academy is about. Um, and then once people go through, we have all of these other tools and ways that we can be of support. So um, now I'm kind of feeling like six weeks because a 12 week commitment, I mean, 12 weeks is three months for a lot of people especially if they haven't made a commitment to a group like that before, that's a really long time. And it's hard to kind of plan around potentially in the future, but six weeks is, uh, I think feels, might feel more manageable. So that's just one consideration. Over to Roland. Um, yeah, well, the, uh, the six weeks sounds, sounds good to me. Um, I'm, I actually feel a little agnostic about six or 12 weeks. Uh, I, I don't have in my mind a sense of what that either one would feel like in terms of commitment. Um, and, uh, and also I think just, uh, just, a a, a, a point, a clarification that, the guilds as we've been experiencing them since the charrette is in my mind anyway that is one lifeboat um that is building around the the lifeboat academy specifically but the lifeboat academy in uh, um, uh, the the purpose of the lifeboat academy is to launch several lifeboats you know i think i think at one point we were using the number 100 lifeboats but it's 100 lifeboats plus so um there's the there's the potential that the format that we are developing for the guilds and around the six conversations and et cetera, the navigation sessions gets uh, multiplied and isn't only centered around the Lifeboat Academy as we understand it now, the people who are part of it now, but then is larger. That's my understanding. And that's sort of what I've, what I've been holding in my mind and that we first need to have a functioning lifeboat academy lifeboat and the lifeboat academy lifeboat then uh, is building a network uh, connections and networks with other lifeboats and so it starts here I don't know if that makes it any clearer or if it muddies the water so I will pass it over to Linda and you can let me know 
Yeah, I'm still here barely. Um, yeah, that Roland, you just um, said what I was thinking, which is, it seems to me there needs to be more thought before we offer this as to uh, where we want people to go once the six conversation series is over. Um, that, I mean, in, in, in other words, what if we're going to be building a network uh, of potential lifeboats across the country and hopefully everywhere, <laughs> uh, what is the Lifeboat Academy, what, what does the Lifeboat Academy need to do to structure itself to add, to, to create um, support for that? And I, I, I certainly don't know, but I, it seems like that hasn't been thought through yet. So this is a wonderful way to get that conversation or people, attracted to what the, the Lifeboat Academy is about. But until we really think through next steps, we might find uh, that we're back in the place where people aren't showing up for the gills, people aren't making commitments in ways that would be satisfying you know, to the ultimate goals that the Lifeboat Academy has. So I, I think we need some real strategic thinking around how do we actually build the structure that can support a networked organization of life folks back to you Ben and then I this is probably my last um, ability to talk because I'm real close to where I'm going um well we have thought through that um so I um the thing that um so what we have proposed in terms you now we're the from the very beginning we're trying to figure out how this can be a bootstrapped network and um so the we're really leaning into mutual aid structures um where people are where we're not having to pay staff um that you know from uh you know that we have to then figure out where the income comes to pay the support staff um so that's why there's the focus on the mentorship relationship and the navigation sessions. There are, there is already designed and tested a, and actually Linda, you did come to the webinar that was how to build your own lifeboat, where we offer a five-step process for petite people who want to be lifeboat builders. And then there's a follow-up webinar for each of those steps. And one of those steps is the lifeboat circle. So the idea had always been that people would come to some of our lifeboat circles as a way of getting the first taste and then saying, oh, right, I can have these conversations with my own network. And then we provide coaching on the side to help them facilitate their own lifeboat circles. And the lifeboat circle is the first, well, it's the second step on the process that leads to the next step, which is getting people to brainstorm short-term experiments um, that they can run you know, with their group, with their available resources. Um, so that is all thought out that basically as a, as a lifeboat builder, you get coaching and an invitation to the navigation sessions, which is where you get to talk to other lifeboat builders about the, the tensions that normally come up, get brainstorming advice and, you know, that, that kind of thing. And that there is a, you know, here's a five-step process that you can follow. Interestingly, that's all based on three-month experiments. So the 12-week cycle makes a lot of sense because that fits with, you know, from beginning to end. And it's almost like if there's a way that we could have people be thinking about a little mini experiment as they go. Um, the only thing that makes this tricky is that we don't have our lifeboat fully functioning and we're still trying to slot people into the local Spalding Valley lifeboat. And um, because the idea would be everyone would have their internal lifeboat operations and then connections to the network. So the navigation sessions and some of these and the outreach guild are really about the more external parts, the network to network parts. And then the other things are internal, you know, um, so like our principles and governance and onboarding is supposed to be onboarding people to what's happening here locally. But because we don't have that critical mass yet, we're still, you know, kind of kind of 
piecing that together. So I feel like there's something about how we can keep that message straight because that keeps getting lost that, you know, uh, that we are a lifeboat and that we are also holding that lifeboat network for other lifeboat builders and that we are modeling here what we are suggesting other people do where they are. And um, so, yeah, I'm not sure how we keep that distinction clear. Um, that's, you know, we we actually rejiggered how we did guilds this year and we lost that distinction before, prior to this year, we had the lifeboat, we had the farm guilds and the network guilds and they they blended together this year. So I think in some ways we lost some of that clarity, but it was also functionally necessary. Um, so um it does make me think though about how does how is there a parallel track along with the six conversations that is something that's more action oriented you know um and that, or or is it just that people go through the conversations and then the next step is moving into action um so, and I don't want this, I guess, you know, these are good questions for conversation, for, for consideration, and how do we make sure that we don't make this more complicated than it needs to be? Um, so over to you, Ronnie. Yeah, so I'm not sure whether to do six weeks or 12 weeks. I mean, I see benefits to both. Um, I have a, sorry, I'm going to break Go circle. Go because I'm. Well, because I think that the other thing too that I, that I fear is happening is that we're starting to think about how do we design this for imaginary people we've never met mm. as opposed oh, to how do we design this for the 16 people that have already said they're interested in guilds and who we want to, to weave together more closely. So coming back to Rolan's point mm. and, and I think that, um, We've got a bunch of people and we can say, do you have a preference for it? It's prefer six weeks, prefer 12 weeks, prefer six weeks every week, 12 weeks every other week or no preference. That's one question. And then we're thinking about meeting at, you know, five o'clock, uh, five o'clock Pacific, seven o'clock central, um, you know, uh, would which day of the week would work better for you Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday. And, or, you know, are you, would you be interested in yes or no? And then, you know, ask those questions and then we go with the best answer that we get. Cause I'm also agnostic. I can go, I can see the value either way. And so why don't we throw it out to the people who would actually be affected by this decision? Well, and that makes sense. <laughs> I guess that's kind of the process that we use. <laughs> we should adopt that. Write it we should, down. We should write that yeah, down do we somewhere. Have that written down down somewhere? <laughs> All right. The process works. Okay. Yeah, that sounds great. So um, let me go all the way back up. Oh, wait. Um, I had action items somewhere. So poll to guild members asking about six or 12 weeks. Anything else that needs to go in that poll? I wonder if just mentioning that um, it, uh, that it is meant to help uh, clarify what the Lightboat Academy is and uh, to um, uh, sort of build guild relationship could be something interesting to add, and also that uh, 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 that it is. Um, uh, I, there's a better way of saying that it's a it's a test run, but something like that, you know. 
but I, that's just a suggestion. Yeah, and this really is my my uh, checkout. I, I like, now that I understand that this is going to be more of an internal test run, it makes sense just to do it the way uh, Ben and, and uh, Ronnie has talked about it. You know, just, just put it out to the people who have already signed up to the Guild. You know, it'll help clarify, I think, and build relationships among the existing people who have already kind of committed and then we also get experience running it and then should we decide to open it up to more pe to people that uh, are out sort of outside uh, the network we'll know how to do it better so I'm I'm all for that that sounds like a good plan and I'm gonna sign out thank you guys see you next week thank bye, you, Linda. bye. bye. Yeah. well yeah and I, I feel like uh, it's almost mic drop <laughs> I think, I, yeah, what Linda said, that makes a lot of sense. I still want to invite people who aren't necessarily coming to guild meetings. Like I want to oh. invite Austin, who I'm mentoring now. I want to invite Kath. Um, I don't want it to be either or. I want it to be. No, and I don't, yeah. I don't either. And I think that that's it. It's kind of, you know, um, it's a pilot we want to, this is what I said earlier, and, and I come back to it. I think it's, you know, we want to make sure that there's a core group for whom it works, who will show up. Yeah. And then we can, and then I think actually using the inviting friends and family, you know, like, who do you know who might be interested is going to be a lot much better, um, which is actually part of how we want this to work in a, you know, for a lifeboat builder, that's what we should encourage them to do because they're going to have the same concerns. How do you get people to show up? And there's only three or four of us that are interested and in what do we do about that? And so actually we can test out that using it as a sort of a recruitment tool as well. I think I've totally degenerated from circle process. I'm sorry, I pass over to Ronnie. Over to you, Roland. Thank you. Um, uh, yeah, uh, so, and, uh, I would like, I'm fine with, uh, I'm, I, I'm not disagreeing with opening it up to people beyond the guild, current guild members. And I think I would also want, um, for guild members to have priority for whatever number of spots, which I don't know if we've decided on, but whatever number of spots we want to make available for this pilot project uh yeah and i wanted to say something for what ben was just saying but now i can't remember what it was so i will pass to ronnie um no you passed yeah. to me. oh don't okay. you i passed to ronnie but <laughs> we you spoke right before roland that's right so now so now we're going back okay Okay, yeah. we reverse circle. <laughs> we must be wrapping um, up. <laughs> choices, yeah. make, uh, choices have consequences, and you chose to break circle, so that's your consequence. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't. I don't think we're going to have a problem with too many signups. I could be wrong. Um, but I think you know, maximum ten spots per session. Not everybody's going to make every session. Um, and, uh, but yeah, I do, I do like prioritizing guild members and, and, uh, you know, we're the people who are holding the most sort of knowledge and experience about these processes and how to use them. And, and, um, so I think that will make inviting other people in a really rich, rich experience for them. Um, I can send out this Poll. I'm actually, I think I'm just going to send it in an email. So instead of the whole Google form thing, I'm just going to say, send it, let me, you know, respond to this email. Please answer the following questions. Let me know if you have any other thoughts. Um, yeah. So as of now, we haven't scheduled anything, but we have fully and we have very much uh, talked through <laughs> this in detail. And I think it's been really productive. Mm -hmm. Um is there anything else about this topic in particular that anyone would like to share over to Rowan? Uh, I would volunteer, I think for um, uh, current guild members, um, uh, I think 
sending reminders and and pushing a little bit for participation is is uh, would would be helpful and would be worthwhile. And I would volunteer to um, help with that. I just need to know who uh, if we agree if we agree to do that, um, then I just need to to be told who to who to prod uh, over to Ben. Ronnie, Ronnie, Ben, Ronnie. I don't. I can't remember now. Ben, <laughs> out there. Uh, yeah, this all sounds good to me. Um, I like the idea of the email as opposed to the form because I think it makes it easier for people to also add comments. You know, um, like I was just thinking about the five p.m. Pacific time is sort of like, you know, we're hoping to do. You know, we think evenings are better than than days, and an evening time that works you know, East Coast to West Coast is, we're thinking five o'clock, does that work for you? You know, kind of, and we don't, you know, uh, in an email, people can, they can comment on it, whether we ask a question or not. And I like that. And the follow-up might just be having a spreadsheet where we record people's answers, because it would be nice to have everything in one place. So if there's, and then that also, then you know who you haven't heard from. So if, you know, uh, just put together a simple little tracking spreadsheet and then that can um, provide for the coordination there. Yeah, this feels good. And and I feel like um, even though, it, you know, we took more than the hour to do it and we've got a couple other things on there, I kind of feel like the stuff that we're talking about starts to get into, you know, questions about the navigation session and how do we open that up. And so I feel like it was a really good use of time. Um, so back to you, Ronnie. Is there anything else on the, um, okay, well, in terms of the newsletter, shall I put in the navigation session two weeks from now? So keep to the schedule we've been doing is one question. Um, and also, do I include a note that we're gonna be offering? No, we're keeping it to the guilds. I think I don't know. Okay. Yeah. Do we do I include a note saying we're going to be doing a lifeboat circles series? Keep an eye out. That's what I would do. Okay. And I think with the navigation session, you can also whose, um, whose turn is it? Whose turn is it? We're done with circle. Circles don't work. <laughs> the circle is broken. I <laughs> All right, I'll mute myself. <laughs> Is it my, my turn? Can I talk? Roll on. <laughs> Yay! Uh, for the navigation session, I I think let's uh, I I would suggest that that they continue, even if it's just to keep that space open. In in terms of the days of uh, the where it is in the month, uh, weeks, um, and I would also. I, I would open it, I would add it in the newsletter and I would open it and, but say that there's limited space um, and that for this, for this pilot project, um, if we continue it or something like that, then we'll get back in touch with the, 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 the people, whatever, so that, that then we, we have the option of prioritizing the guild members and uh, and that we are not we're letting people know that it exists and that I think it's going to work. I think it's going to be fantastic, and I think we're going to want to do it again. We may want to to rethink from from the from the AMAC reflect that we're going to do. We may want to jigger things a little bit, but I think it's uh, I think it's a great idea and a great way of going deeper into into the the things that we're talking about. So I think that having a wait list makes a lot of sense because when the pilot project is over and we can refine things, then we've got people that we can say, hey, if you're still interested, we, you can you can join there. That's what I wanted to say. Thank you very much. Over to the next person. Who's next? <laughs> Which is me. Okay. <laughs> um, and I, I would say, let us know. I think it's space is limited. Let us know if you're interested. And not to say we'll add you to the wait list, because I think that's a pretty presumptuous. Um, and um, uh, what was the other thing? Um, 
Oh, and with the navigation sessions as well for the article in the newsletter, I think putting in that we're going to be having one in two weeks and a little note, we're also thinking about uh, adjusting the schedule so that it w fits with more people. If you're interested in the navigation sessions or curious about it, let us know and we'll include you in that planning. Awesome. Um, ben, will you double check that Calendly is set up for a navigation session in two weeks? Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. All right. That sounds good. I'm really excited about this new endeavor. I think it's going to be great. I agree with him. All right. So we talked about that. We talked about navigation sessions, talked about the newsletter. Um, that seems pretty good. We're already at an hour, 20 minutes. So people agree that we, we can be done for the, for the day. Awesome. Cool. Well, thank you everyone for being here and for all those watching, keep an eye out in your inbox for our biweekly newsletter, which will be coming out this week. And if you're not yet receiving the newsletter, uh, reach out to us and let us know and we can add you to our mailing list. Yes, Roland. Thank you. Um, uh, so this is this came out of uh, um, the Heartwork Guild. Um, what shall I report back to the Heartwork Guild from the Outreach Guild concerning the six conversations? Whatever you think is appropriate as the caretaker. Okay, you bye. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Okay. <laughs> All righty. Um, take care, everyone, and I will see you soon. Mm -hmm. Oh, and Ronnie, I checked Calendly is working for the next navigation session. Perfect. That's wonderful. All okay. right. Bye. Bye.